Hey everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Joey. Hello. Hey Christian. Hey, nice having me. You know, it's so folks that don't know you, who are you? Where are you? And what do you do? Uh well, I'm Joey. I'm living in the Netherlands. I'm 32 years old, and uh I recently became an MVP since uh, the first of February this year. So it's, uh, it's I'm really new into uh, this community. Uh or let's say in the MVP program. Mm -hmm. Um I'm working as a modern workplace consultant, or maybe a Microsoft 365 consultant, uh, but I mainly focus on uh, implementing modern workplaces. Mm -hmm. um, I also kind of like uh, the Defender product line, so I'm implementing and maintaining uh, Defender products, mm -hmm. Defender for Cloud, Defender for Cloud Apps, Defender for Office 365, all those kinds of, uh, of tooling. And um, yeah, I became an MVP in the security category, which is quite new. Uh, but my main focus is actually enterprise mobility in my day-to-day yeah. -day job. So that's, yeah, that's uh, kind of funny, actually. Um, I'm not sure how that uh, became uh, or how I became a security MVP. Well, but it's interesting because there are a number of enterprise mobility MVPs. Who got a some second? Of, right. Some of them switched yeah. over to security. Some of them yeah. became dual security and enterprise mobility and then some have remained. So I don't understand. Well, <laughs> I, I guess I it's what you do. focus on, but yeah. Yeah, I, I maybe do. Uh, because I spoke to the community program manager uh, about this. And she said, well, where do you see yourself in the coming years? Is it in security or in enterprise mobility? I say, well, I don't know, actually, because they kind of have an overlap together. Yeah. Work is always having some security in it. and Otherwise, the same thing. I I think she chose security for me. Don't know why. Maybe she did. But uh, yeah, it was security actually. But I'm happy with it. So uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's well. One thing, and you probably already know this too, is that I mean, what once you're, I mean, you have to be, uh, uh, you know, brought into the program through like one product area, one focus area, yeah. or or multiple. Yeah. Um, but it, really with a focus, I came in as a SharePoint MVP. And then okay. when Teams launched, I've been heavily on the team side of things, but I'm across like the office suite. Once you're an MVP, you can be writing about Microsoft 365, Windows, Azure, AI, all those things. Yeah. You can yeah. be involved in all those things, even though you're still listed as a security MVP. So that's why it's interesting. You know, I, I, have you even participated in one of the MVP calls, like one of the NDA calls yet the monthly calls uh no not yet because right. i'm uh, like brand new yeah yeah, yeah. Brand, new. Really so, brand new so with that i mean you'll you'll start to see that you know it's one thing is that you know mvps um yeah you know, like occasionally somebody will come up to me and then start asking me like desktop oh you're an mvp and asking me azure or desktop support related yeah. things i'm like yeah that, i'm not that guy that's not me uh yeah, you're not a robot you don't know but anything. yeah there <laughs> are those mvps that are it's like oh yeah let me let me explain how this is they could talk about all those different areas um yeah. but it's a it, it's great it's all i i liken it to um once you become an mvp it's almost like um going to university and suddenly being able to take all these electives yeah. find out more like i have my major focus of study but I have all of these other electives that I can go and do. Well, and I actually kind of like blogging and sharing content in the enterprise mobility category mm -hmm. and uh, all contributions, uh, which they evaluate once a year, yep. uh, are only done in your own category. But because I'm actually more active in enterprise mobility than my own security category, it could be a hard one for me, the re-evaluation. No, no. Actually, it, so oh. it isn't. So you can like what? Uh, so again, like because I write on a variety of topics. Yeah. So when you enter in your your uh, so if you're writing blog posts on security, enterprise mobility, you can actually when you input those, add them as security or enterprise mobility or Azure or SharePoint or whatever that is into the form, and all of it counts towards towards that. Now we're getting into kind of the weeds of behind the scenes of being an MVP. Oh, yeah. But yeah, so you can do those other things. That's that's the thing. I, 
I think Microsoft appreciates having well-rounded MVPs, but to get in the program, it, you have to be f very focused. Yeah, yeah. And I, I was actually uh, focusing on the enterprise mobility, but as I said, they have kind of overlap. So in enterprise mobility, let's say our modern workplace, we implement conditional access, but conditional access is also security. So yeah. Yeah. So what, <laughs> what was your kind of path? I mean, for you, how'd you find out about the program? How did you become an MVP? <laughs> Uh, well, that's kind of a funny story because uh, I started to follow people on LinkedIn, Reddit, uh, all those kind of uh, social mediums. And I actually uh, got to know a few people. I connected with them, followed their posts, read their blogs, and got interested in all those kind of techniques they are writing about. And I'm actually fully Microsoft-minded, Microsoft first strategy. And um, in the beginning, I was actually shy, shy to share content. But finally, I got an email. I had to. Uh, um, I had a domain name for eight or nine years without doing anything with it, and I had to uh, extend uh, the the domain for another year. So I had to pay the invoice, and I thought, hmm, maybe I should start a blog and just write about random things I do or I build or I implement, whatever doesn't matter. And so it actually started, and uh, I started to write the first blog. And uh, it was finished, and I had to click on the publish button. But it was so, it was actually a, a scared moment to, to, to publish something on the internet for the first time because I'm actually an, an maybe an introvert person, maybe mm -hmm. I'm not really in the middle of the audience. Um, so that was a, a, a difficult point actually then. And by doing it, I only had a few views. My LinkedIn post didn't get many likes or he shares a comment. So th the start was quite difficult, but I continue to keep doing it, keep sharing, keep writing blogs. And it actually grew over time. And um, it actually starts to get funny by every blog you you write. It's, it's like a growing thing. Yeah. I'm getting better in it every time. I'm getting uh, used to it actually. Mm -hmm. And now it's kind of funny to do it. And you see uh, people uh, start to follow you, uh, more likes every time, more views on your blog post. It, it, you kind of grow into it. It's it's yeah, it's a fun story, actually, how it goes. I always call it, it's, a, it's about, um, you know, like so much that we do in our lives, it's about creating healthy habits. If you're not in the habit of sharing, it can be hard. Once you build yeah. that habit, then it just becomes natural part of you, your profile, to, yeah. hey, I just learned this thing. Hey, I want to share this thing out that I just learned. And this is what I learned from it. And here's how you can do it. And I'm going to yeah. modify it. And what are your yeah. thoughts? What are your feedback? And and so it really is a change that I think anybody can make. But it, it's hard to start anything new. It's like, yeah. so it's like, like dieting. Well. You know, you don't yeah. just instant results of dieting. It takes yeah. time and effort. And yeah, and starting with it was, uh, yeah, it was really difficult. And <laughs> actually my blog is uh it's a funny thing um you know the visual uh, studio subscription you get in azure the, the yeah. free credits <laughs> okay because i didn't know if i wanted to continue writing blogs so i started a blog a wordpress blog in uh, in azure i write that a blog i published that first blog mm -hmm. and two weeks later the blog was offline because my credits were gone <laughs> <laughs> so my, yeah. my blog was offline for two weeks uh. and the second month i wrote another blog and the same thing happened. So yeah. I thought, well, I can't you know, continue. Hey, this. There's a, that's a blog post. That's a great story for a blog post talking it, about that. Yeah, 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 it could be a great story. Yeah. yeah. But it actually happened and it happened two times. And then I was thinking like, ah, only a few bucks a year. A year let's go. Yeah. I, I ordered a, a web hosting package with a WordPress blog and it's still running and it's, yeah. it's doing great actually. So yeah, it's a funny story. That's uh, too funny. Well, so what are the, so you, so you talked about the space that you've been in, you've talked about, you know, becoming an MVP, kind of what have your, what are your big topics? Like, what are you writing about? What, what level are you writing on? What, what kind of drives your passion around the technology? Um, ooh, I actually, um, well, I had a discussion with the community program manager about sharing content. And I told her, I actually don't like to share a blog with 
one simple policy or one simple thing, how you can implement it, because probably everyone knows it. So things I'm writing about is kind of a, a greatest thing. It, it, mm -hmm. it should have some value in it. Everyone can write a blog on, on how to implement uh, site to zone assignments, for example. I don't write about this. I, I want to add some value with specific things who are maybe not done yet or not written about. And um, I actually uh, see this in my blogs uh, when I check at the, the, the views, the total amount of views. Some blogs are really sky high and some are actually doing almost nothing. So there is, I'm not sure if people are looking for specific things yeah. because Sometimes. they know about it, yeah. subjects, because they know about it. Yeah, I'm not sure what people like. I create a thing with which can add some value to your environment or whatever, mm -hmm. or a more common thing which everybody is doing. That's yeah, it's still difficult because I like blogs or, or sharing content which adds value and not the basic standard stuff everyone can do. Well, the only That's thing I would I would modify that is that because sometimes like occasionally I do, like I do write about productivity tips and there's some tips where it's brand new feature and Hey, here's how you can incorporate. Yeah. It's always exciting to write about those things. Like I just did a blog post for a feature that was released at the end of 2019, early 2020, mm -hmm. but I had a unique take on it and a story around that. And I yeah. also see that people don't know about it uh, and, and aren't really using that. And so uh, you know, sometimes like to your point, I, sometimes I go in and I look at the stats and I say, what are people re who read my site? W like, what are they finding the most interesting? There's yeah. a couple posts that I wrote three, four years ago that remain in the top five every month. Like people yeah. love that content. Yeah. Uh, and I could write more of that content just because I know that's what people like. Yeah. I'm actually you. not yeah. as interested in those topics. And so I'm not, I'm not writing about it. Cause I, I, I you know, but it's, so it's like, you, you've got to, I guess the phrasing is, you know, you do you figure out what you enjoy doing and write about that. My thinking yeah. is like, I'm not blogging to see how big I can get the site out there. I'm, I'm doing it more of an extension of my brain. I'm sharing mm -hmm. the information, sharing the stuff. Sometimes it might be five people reading it. Sometimes there's 5,000 people reading it in the yeah. first week, you know, and mm -hmm. it's great when that happens, but I'm going to plug on and continue writing about the things that I'm passionate about, regardless of the stats. Yeah. And Actually, I'm learning. I'm learning from every blog I write because in in the past I wrote a blog about uh, Azure VPN Gateway, and I'm actually not a network guy. I'm I'm really not into networking gateways, VPN, and that kind of stuff. But by writing the blog step by step, I actually lear learned something. And yeah. this blog is actually going sky high every day. It, it has thousands of views. It's yeah. perfect. And uh, I think I was actually the first one writing about this and how to implement it and sharing some code on how to do it. So, yeah, I, I learn by writing blogs myself. And that's yeah. that's cool. Actually, I, yeah. I do the same thing. That's how I, my primary learning, just of my brain type and my learning style is by writing, researching it, yeah. finding the answers, understanding. So I'm writing content, looking at other comments and questions from users and making sure that my content answers those questions is a, is a little more, you know, more robust of a content of what might be out there. Um, but yeah, I do the, the exact same thing. That's why I say it's an extension of my brain. It's, it also sometimes when I go and I'm researching a topic, um, every article I've ever written, every white paper is always, it's all in one note. Uh, mm -hmm. And so it's all in the cloud and, and I have access to it no matter where I am, but I always search first with what I've already written across LinkedIn yeah. and Medium and my blog and customer sites and former companies. And I find I, all of that. And sometimes I reach like, hey, I wrote something two years ago. I completely forgot that I, I wrote on just that. Mentioned, yeah, I was, yeah. I, <laughs> this week I read our own blog of mine, which I was kind of implementing. And I was thinking, how have I done this in the past? And was, <laughs> I was re actually reading my own blog yeah. And how I have implemented this in the past. And I just followed my own blog and yeah, it works. <laughs> have you ever done this? Like I actually, one time I went and I found something that I wrote and I'm reading through it. I'm just, and I was like, well, wow, that's really good. 
Like I completely forgot. I have no memory of writing that thing, you know, yeah. uh, on, on something that was, you know, and, and but I, I actually, you know, I, was, I referenced my own blog posts, which is a good thing to do and cross links and stuff within mm-hmm. your site. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's, again, the power of search to go and yeah. search within your own content. Well, you know what is funny? If you are trying to, uh, to do a Google search and you find your own blog post as the first result. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. That's always rewarding. Well, then yeah. I, then I, but you know, it does have a little intelligence that knows who you are. And so it, yeah. it, it prioritizes your content. So that's why sometimes when I find that, this sounds so narcissistic, but I, you know, I will then I'll open up like in, in incognito. So it doesn't have a lot yeah. of those attachments and do the search again. If I'm still yeah. in like the top two or three, it was like, all right, you know, Hey, did a great job. Yeah. 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 yeah good yeah, good job, is. me. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. well, very cool. Well, Joey, so uh, what else are you doing? Are, like, how involved are you in the community? Um, well, I'm actually active in uh, uh, on Reddit, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, of course. And I'm actually, uh, since a few months, I'm active in the EMS uh, Discord community. Maybe mm, you've yeah. heard about it. Yep. Uh, I was in there as one of the first 10, 15 people, I think. And I'm still active there every day. I think we have around maybe 1,000 people in it now. Uh, some active, some don't act, some are not active. And yeah. uh, we do some podcasts, uh, virtual uh, sessions, uh, yep. virtual speaking sessions. And I'm actually thinking of uh, doing some public speaking, maybe this year or in the upcoming years. But it's 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 a difficult thing for me to, to step up on a stage and, and do this kind of things. But I actually willing to do this uh, in, in maybe now one or two years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, so that's actually, that's a great, comment because one of the questions that people ask that are interested in you know looking into maybe becoming an MVP there's like do I have to have a lot of experience public speaking and it's like you know no, yeah. there are there are MVPs that never step on a stage that yeah. do not present that are that are complete like I know one one of my favorite and I won't name him because that embarrasses him but <laughs> um who is one of the most technical MVPs uh, and a good friend who is very shy. He wants to be behind the scenes. He's yeah. very introverted, but he is one of the, I always comment, it's like when Microsoft product team and engineering team have questions about SharePoint, he's one of the people that they reach out to in the community. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, know, knows more about SharePoint than most of the engineering team. You know, that's a, <laughs> you know, there, and there's a handful of people that are like that, but you know, there's nothing wrong with that. There's a different path. Mm-hmm. That's why I yeah. ask, like, how do yeah, you become an yeah. MVP? Because there's a different path for everybody. Yeah, there are so much uh, different MVPs around the, co- of, uh, around the globe. And I ask myself the same question. Can I be an MVP if I'm never on stage? Hmm. Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah. because I, I know some people who write 50 blogs a year and are an MVP, but never spoke on a, on a stage. Yeah. Yep. It, it, yeah. Can. yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. all great. Well, Joey, really appreciate the time to get to know you and, and meet you. So, for folks that want to find out about you, follow you, what are the best ways to reach you, find you out in social? It's, uh, of course, my blog. It's joeyvalinde.com, Twitter, and uh, LinkedIn is uh, probably my uh, my primary uh, social media source. Yeah. Awesome. And, of course, I'll have all the links out on my blog, out on buckleyplanet.com, and out on uh, YouTube and on the podcast. And so you'll find all the links if you want to reach out to Joey. So definitely do that. So, Joey, really appreciate the time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your time. Wow!